Half time over in Budapest and Manchester City currently lead Borussia Mönchengladbach 1-0 in this first fixture of our last 16 tie. Uh, and we've got one very happy man to my right, Kevin Horlock, and another one to my left, Paul Dickoff. Kevin, slightly happier because, I mean, both predictions still in, but uh, the one goal scorer down, Kev. Yeah, Bernardo, that's, I, I would have said he was going to be scoring in the first half as well, but he didn't give me time to say that. Um, it was a great goal, wasn't it? Yeah. A great goal. It was a, it was a, it was a great half of football, Paul. We felt very much in control again. Yeah, they were from the first minute, really. Amazed. I mean, we we're saying as we were watching the game how often Munch and Gladbach are trying to play out from back. Um, just playing into our hands, winning the ball high up. I'm um, just surprised we've not scored as many goals, but, you know, another clean sheet so far. 1 0 away from home in European game. Fantastic. Really is fantastic. And uh, Kev, we, we kind of, as we said, watched the half develop. There was never even really a cause for concern. I don't think Borussia much and Gladbach didn't seem to test us too much. No, not really. And, and Paul's touched on it there. They're, they're keen to play out, which has played into our hands. They have got through us a couple of times, which is just that little little warning, but nothing too harshly or, or, or to worry about, in my opinion. Um, yeah, it, it amazes me that they continue to play out because. Uh, they have come unstuck and we've, we've we've created a few half chances from that. Um, maybe I'm going old school here, but if I was their manager, I'd be saying squeeze up and kick it long and put it in their half because they've not been in Manchester City's half often enough. Is that something maybe off that pole, probably in the second half, if they look to do that, that's where the game might kind of branch out? Yeah, but I th I th they're trying to play out with, with sort of eight players in and around their own 18-yard box. So a couple of times, like Kev says, when they did sort of get through... Um, there was the centre forward up against Rodri, um, Ruben Diaz, and, and Laporte, so there was yeah. no support up there. Um, you've got to look, you've got to give them credit for them, the confidence to do it. Is it stupidity sometimes? Because you know, Man City are setting little traps. They're waiting for them playing it, and as soon as they do play it out for the back, the trigger goes and presses, and we've won the ball high up so many times. So many times, and as you said before the game, Paul, you know this press was looked like what we were going to go for. Um, it kind of also branched us out into that goal because um, it was a think we'd won the ball a little bit further up, passed it around a bit, and then lovely header from your man Bernardo. Yeah, and, and we, me and Paul spoke about it. I think years gone by, Manchester City were known for, for obviously playing good football, playing on angles, playing on overloads, getting to the byline, and, and a lot of it was cutbacks. I think more recently, there's another dimension. I think they looked for the area where Bernardo had run. We, we hit them areas quite often now. It was a great ball in from Concello. He's coming on his right foot, and it was great delivery and timing of the run. And it was a good header as well, because mm. obviously the defender in front of him could have made him take his eye off it, but he kept his eye on it, headed it down, which all strikers are told to do or all players are told to do um, and yeah it was a great goal it's funny because you know the one time you'd say a small man on the pitch you know scoring ahead you go it's kind of lucky but Be careful <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. walking on a minefield here but you know but then to see kind of again an almost a bit of a carbon copy Bernardo another one of the smallest players on the pitch popping up with a header that's not just by chance is it no no I think Kev's bang on um, that's obviously something that they work on um, you know, we've seen it with Riyadh, another side coming in his left foot. Very similar position that Reem's got himself into for the yeah. header. Um, and then Concello, fantastic ball in. And, you know, nine times, it's the same that they're obviously working it, nine times out of ten, and, you know, the, if a wide player's got the ball and it's a little short man that's in the box up against a, a taller centre half, they won't put the ball in there. Yeah, yeah. They'll look to play and look to play and look to play, but they get half a yard now and they see the runners in the box. And it's, it's no coincidence saying it was Raheem. It's Bernardo tonight. Um, Gundogan's got himself in that third man running sort of area. You know, yeah. they're, they're getting a lot more bodies in the box now. And rather, as Kev says, trying to sort of play around in little triangles and little one-twos, they don't think twice about putting it in there. We, we've stayed in control, and but I can't think of really, though, any of the clear-cut chances maybe for us to get that second. Is that maybe a, a room for improvement? Yeah, you think? a couple of times we've, we've obviously turned the ball over on them, trying to play out... Um, Sterling's had a few half chances. It just looked a little bit indecisive. Um, maybe a couple of options too many, not knowing whether to pull the trigger and shoot or pass. But I think that would come. And just going back to the crosses, we're not talking about these crosses going into them areas floaty. Yeah. They're not to be contested. The ball's got that much pace on it. They've definitely worked on that because mm -hmm. whenever they hit them areas, when we've seen goals scored and created where they've been headed back from crosses like that, um, they know what they're doing. They know to fill areas, and it's the pace on the ball. This is boring, just this is for my own interest, but technically, you know, if the way, what, how are you you hitting that ball? Because obviously you know how to get a cross in, or maybe if you want to whip a shot, but a whipped cross is what's the, the technique Look, proper it, you go for? Well, just putting myself in Concello's 
pos- position there. Me cutting into my right, and then I would have crossed it, and he'd have probably gone over near the halfway line, mate, <laughs> if I'm totally honest. But from a left point of view, he's just trying to get good connection. You sort of strike through the ball and up and over it, which gives it that whip and, ah, and okay. dip and a little bit of pace on it. And then, although it's still a great finish, the, the, the headed finish becomes a lot easier that way. Yeah. Good paces on the ball. Yeah. That was the same with Raheem's at the weekend and tonight. You know, the ball's been whipped in with that much pace. That all you've got to do, you don't actually have to go and head it, you've just got to guide it because there's no need for you to put, put the pace on it. And, mm-hmm. you know, yet again, great ball in, great head to go. Lovely stuff. Let's take a look at some stats uh, from this first half now that we can bring. You have a little ganders at these. So we can see that. I mean, there's, I mean, again, I mean, there's a lot to be said here, isn't there, for not even an attempt from much and glad back, and we kind of touched upon there. But you also then look at kind of um, the, our, our possession control, and again, maybe just looking at attempts on target slightly, gents, do you think, for us to improve in, in the second half? But other than that, we're kind of very, very comfortable. Yeah, attempts on target, I think Pep would be looking for that to be improved. I, I think it tells a story as well, one offside, which, which tells me Munch and Gladbach are sitting in there, they're getting numbers behind the ball, there's not much space to run in behind them. So from their point of view, I think they'd be quite happy to still be in touch. Mm-hmm. Um, but they've got to come out at some point to try and get back into the tie, and that's when it becomes really dangerous for them. Well, we, we were speaking before the show that they are very much a threat going forward. And, you know, are, 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 are no mugs by any means. So I guess that's something that will that be being said at half time, Paul? Yeah, it is. And look, if, if the, <laughs> stating the obvious, if they want to get a result, they're going to have to come out and attack us a little bit more. But we've seen many times that that, that plays into our hands, you know. And the more possession we have, the longer the game goes on, they're, they're going to get tired because mm-hmm. they're, they're chasing the ball a lot. Um, they're giving the ball away very cheaply when they have got it. Which exerts more energy, and yep. you know, so Pet probably is just m- much of the same again. Mm-hmm. Keep, keep the ball and wait for your chance as the game goes on, because the game, game will have to open up. Yeah, and and, and if if it was to do that, maybe substitution wise, Kevin, where would is there anywhere you'd be maybe looking to? Who would you be bringing on? Do you think possibly yeah. KDB? I suppose we looked at. I suppose most Blues would want to see Aguero at some point. Maybe Mr. Whippy, get yeah. a little rest at some point. <laughs> um, yeah, it may, look, I'm looking forward to this second half. I, I would love to see Aguero get minutes, um, but we'll have to wait and see. We will have to wait and see indeed. Um, okay, well, second half is on the way. But first of all, let me bring you some of your brilliant tweets you've been sending us on WNRH. That's our hashtag. And it is really so great to hear from you all around the world as well. I mean, straight away, um, we have this here from, uh, I think it's Kabev on Twitter, who's just said the feeling when you're waiting for Champions League, and he's added a lot of little pictures staring down the lens. I think we all know that feeling. Uh, he said, legend team right now. Uh, we also had Om get in touch on Twitter, who says, I'm at home in Pune in India. Uh, so great to have you joining us. Uh, also over in Turkey, we have Kana Turkman on Twitter, who says, let's do it, guys. Lovely picture as well. The point is always strong on a picture. Uh, and Cal, who's been on touch on Twitter, beautiful. Beautiful photo of you shared, saying, just got in from work and ready to watch the game with my champ. That champ being a new little newborn in a lovely city baby grow there. The mosaic one as well. Lovely touch. Um, so keep them coming on in. Mystery blue time. Gents, do you want to, shall we reveal, who are your guesses? Who are your guesses for mystery instantly blue? Instantly I thought Bosfeld. Okay. Um, going off the pitch, the blonde locks, um, has made me sort of second guess myself, maybe Gerard Vikings. Gerard um, Vikings. Mm. Who, was, who was yours, Paul? Um... Going to stick with Paul Bosvelt. You're going to go Paul Bosvelt? Yeah. Okay, let's have another little Gunders people at home. We've got a few um, suggestions as well that have come in on Twitter around that. Yeah, so more. we're thinking either Bosvelt or Vikings here in the studio. Um, MCFC Yankees on Twitter says Craig Bellamy, no doubt, um, which is interesting. Uh, Jill's also tweeted to say, my eight-year-old thinks the mystery blue is Sterling. Uh, and we have Tony on Twitter who says mystery blue. I'd also take a guess at Paul Bosvelt. Um, so it seems like Paul Buzzwell maybe was, is the horse. Yeah, that was the initial fault, wasn't it? Yeah, you always go with the gut they say, isn't it? Yeah. You know, don't overthink it. Um, well, um, if we are correct, we'll find out at full time when we'll be revealing that mystery blue. Uh, and we will, of course, be getting into all the second half action. So another 45 minutes on the way. And then come join us at full time. And myself, Paul and Kevin will be getting into all the action. Remember, use the hashtag WNRH. Get yourself that cup of tea. Come on, city. <laughs> 